song. Two out of three people with diabetes die of heart attack or stroke. That was his wake-up call. This is yours. The good news is, you can lower the risk of heart attack or stroke. Sir. Ask your health care provider how. To learn more, go to diabetesactnow.org. Hey, I'm Crazy Duck, and this is Jammin' TV with KD. Tonight, special guest, J.T. Curtis coming to you live. Let me tell you a little about him. He's opened up for Keith Burns. He's opened up for Juice Newton, Ambrosia, Atlanta Rhythm Section. He's opened up for many, many other artists of today. Let me tell you, coming to you here in just a moment, J.T. Curtis here on Jammin' TV with K.D. I'll try to call it again from somewhere down on the road. The nights fly by, but the days drag on. Too much time on my hands. Live for the short time that we get to play. But that time always ends And she said I can't wait for you forever, no 
It's not fair to make you stay If we were meant to be in love Guess we'll fall again someday I remember what she said to me Ooh, yeah When I left her for the road Good luck in your newfound life Don't let it get you old If you're going to work this morning, expect heavy trafficking at I-275 near Fletcher. The trafficking of unwitting and unwilling human beings is in Florida, right in front of our very eyes. And we have to stop it before another day goes by. Hey, and we're back with Hanging with KD, sitting here today with Colonel Curtis. How are you doing today, Colonel? Doing great. How are you yeah. doing? I'm doing awesome, man. We got this great show started this uh, tonight's our first night being aired. Well, that's what's great about it. You know, the First show, it's always the best, I think, you know, to come out there. And how the, what do you got planned for the show? Well, we got planned to have some really awesome bands out, out here on the show this uh, season. And we got bands like your, your son, JT Curtis. He's going to be coming and joining us here shortly. Well, that's good. You know, it's going to be good. Uh, uh, 2014 is going to be a big, big year for us, you know. Yeah. And it's a pleasure being here. It's a pleasure being in TV land, you know, and, and <laughs> bringing on Things for, new for the people out there watching TV. We don't want to be the same old show, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. We want to make it different and everything for everybody and, and make it exciting, make it enjoyable. We're going to have some really special guests out this year and, and do some really awesome things. And, you know, we're going to try to do some uh, street talk and, you know, do some uh, local things as far as uh, maybe being single in today's world. Oh, that'd be great. Uh, having some good uh, musicians and, and doing interviews with them. Um, you know, going out on the street and doing some club club work, and uh, you know, you've been a, an a entertainer for years, ain't you? Yes, I've I've been all over. You know, I've done a lot of things in the. You know, I spent 29 years in the Air Force, so this is kind of new to me, but I sure enjoy doing something different, and this is definitely different than anything I've ever done. Yeah. And working with you, I think it's going to be great. Once we kind of got together and decided, hey, we're going to do this, and I think it's going to be a good show. It's going to be very entertaining, and I think we're going to have some great fun. And we're going to do what? Twelve weeks. Twelve of, weeks. Twelve, and 12 weeks. different shows. So for this I, season, yes. right? For this weeks. season, I think what we're going to have is new, good information and good material and entertainment for next year. Yeah. So we got a lot of great things that we've got coming up uh, this evening. Uh, we're going to have JT Curtis coming back here in a short, short. We're going to uh, bring Ozonius out here. We're also going to have. Allison that's going to come on the show a little bit later that's a single mother and talk about you know some single mothers here in a little bit you know on our very first show we hope you all enjoy this because we're definitely having fun with it and Colonel here is going to be uh, my co-host and you know we're going to have some really great 12 weeks of a great show we're going to get rid of the 2013 we're bringing in 2014 right. we're going to have right. fun we're going to get excited we're going to do some real fun we're just going to have, have relax 
and have good times with it. So when we compare our show, it's like a Johnny, Can uh, no, Johnny Carson and Ed McMahon, huh? Yeah, let's do a Johnny <laughs> okay. Carson and Ed McMahon so the, style, you know? It ain't dead. We're going to keep it living, okay? Yeah. I've heard you sat there and uh, met some very interesting Oh, I tell stars. you, I've traveled, I've traveled all over the world, and I've met country stars. I've met movie stars. I've, I drove tour buses for years, you know? And I went up to Graceland, uh, and I was awful close to... You know, meeting Elvis Presley one time. Oh, almost met Elvis yeah. Presley. Yeah, that must but be the awesome. shovel broke. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you know, that's shovel life. Shovel <laughs> <laughs> you know, Oh, so this must have been recently. Yeah. Huh. No, it's, I, nothing bad about Elvis. I loved Elvis. Elvis was a good person. I met him, and it was a good show. But in the years I've been in the business, I've met a lot of good artists, you know. One of my favorites was probably, uh, uh, I met Buck Owens. I, I worked oh, wow. with Buck Owens. Buck Owens group a little bit, and uh, I worked with um, uh, several good good artists, Ernest Tubb, you know, and I was getting ready to go on tour when, er, with Ernest Tubb when he passed away, but since then I've been driving tour buses, and after I got out of the Air Force, I spent 29 years in the Air Force, and then when I got out, I said, I want to do something different, and my son was really into music, and I was went to Nashville to learn what the music business is at, and uh, he's progressed, and he's and got his own buses. He's out touring now, and he's doing good, and I'm proud of him. So, you know, we're wow. looking forward to this show being successful for you, and I want to wish you the very best in the show, and anything we can do to make this show better, we'd like the people to write in and say, hey, do this. We well, like Vernon, that. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to enjoy this, because uh, I know you'll have a lot of stories that you could tell, man, <laughs> and I'm looking forward to this oh. next 12 weeks of working with you. and. And, uh, you know, just being able to hear some of the stories that you probably could tell us. Uh, well, uh, there's a lot of them out there, and I'll tell you what, they're, they're very interesting. Living a life with the uh, celebrities is definitely different than living. They're good people. They're all right. down to earth, and when you get to know them and work with them, you know, and especially when you're driving their bus, your life, their, li you know, their life is in your hands, you know. So, you know, there's a lot to it, and uh, you get to hear all their inner stories that we would never hear. So Man, when you become a bus driver and be working with these people, you'll find out a lot more about them. It's really interesting. So well, being a bus driver, what was the most, uh, what was the one artist that you drove for that gave you the most excitement, fun, and enjoyment? Well, I guess they were all good. I mean, you, you know, it's always fun. I, I drove for uh, president people and, uh, you know, when you're driving a tour bus, you don't know who you're going to pick up. Uh, I drove for a uh, uh, Limp Biscuit when they first, before they got hit, I mean, well, I've been big. out a wild ride. Oh, that was a wild ride. And I, I, um, the, I guess my best friends were uh, um, a, a black group uh, called, uh, with Mr. T was in it, you know, he was a, um, I can't even really think of the name of the group right now, but I'll tell you before the show's over with. All right, know. well, that'd be but great. There, there's some really good entertainers out there, and it's fun working with those kind of people. Well, now you're working with your son, JT, and uh, he's part of the old Silver Eagle band, and you know, he's also coming out now with the Florida Scandals. Well, as... I was the Silver Eagle band for many years. Well, it started out really as a Country Magic, which okay. went back when he was just, before he was really born yet. I was a Country Magic band, played and sung. And then uh, as he grew up, he got about 13 years old, and uh, he really started when he was three, but he wasn't ready for the big crowd. But he, on a hell of a show at three, but the thing is now he's he's seasoned. You know, you got to spend a certain amount of time. He's met Garth Brooks. He's been been all over all over the world. We the last tour he was on was like 26 dates. So I was with those. I helped drive some of those dates, and it's been a fun. And when you can work with your son, working with your family, you know, there ain't nothing better. Uh, there is there nothing, nothing better, better, you know, and everything. But right after this moment, we're gonna come back with JT. Uh, JT Curtis here, and we're going to have him right here in the studio just for y'all.
dad is trustworthy, loyal, helpful. I help my mom and dad. I help my teacher put all her mail away. I've been helpful to younger scouts who have just joined the troop. If somebody needs help finding something, you would help them find it. I sometimes help my grandma find some of her stuff. I help my mom and dad set the table. Should I help three times? Today, right now. Adventures to remember, words to live by. Be a scout. Well, I make my living playing this guitar. And I write about the giving and the taking and the ups and downs of the heart. And I'm so forgiving when a woman goes Cause she always seemed to send me right back up to the top of the charts So do you wanna be the next one so I can write a Why did you leave me number one song about you? Wanna be the next one to make me miserable, sad and blue? Do you wanna be the next one so I can write a Why did you leave me number one song about you? You see the last girl that left me only got me up to number two well, it ain't about living, except for the pain. But I never had another occupation that paid so well to complain. Come on, make me love you, and then break my heart. Cause I need a new song by Friday, and I don't know where to start. Do you want to be the next one so I can write a Why did you leave me number one song about you? Want to be the next one to make me miserable, sad, and blue? Wanna be the next one so I can write a Why did you leave me number one song about you? You see, the last one that left me only got me up to number two. And do you wanna be the next one so I can write a Why did you leave me number one song about you? Wanna be the next one to make me miserable, sad, and blue? Do you wanna be the next one so I can write a Why did you leave me number one song about you? You see, the last one that left me only got me up to number two. back with Hang With KD here and uh, right now we got a special guest with us today named Allison Winters. Allison, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Now KD here, you know, we love to, to kind of give expressions and, uh, you know, let gratitude and things like that to people that do good things and uh, single mothers out there. And Allison Winters is a single mother. She does it, she does it all on her own. She works hard. And we just want to give her some recognition and some, you know, condolences and stuff for being such a great mother. So, you know, I hope you enjoy it. So how are you today? Well, I appreciate it. It's yeah. a lot of work, but it's all worth it. Well, tell us what is, how hard it is sometimes to be a single mother. Well, I work two jobs. One's mainly full-time. The other one's part-time at the bar. And then I just got another job working part-time at Winn-Dixie. So it's tough, but, you know... It's hard to raise a kid on your own, so. Yeah, it's not I have like back it. in the old days when the mother stayed home and did up take care of all the children mm -hmm. at home, and you know, and the fathers went out and worked. Because nowadays it seems like relationships don't, they just don't seem to stay together, or the fathers mm -hmm. don't seem to step up and commit the way they should, or hey, even some mothers don't step up and commit. But you, you stepped up, and you're a good mother and a good woman, and yeah. you know, so it's pretty rough sometimes, ain't it? Yeah, well, luckily I have a lot of friends and family that help. I mean, the father helps. He watches them while I'm at work, but... Uh, a single lady out there right now that is pregnant and fixing to have a baby or just had a baby and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, what kind of advice could you give her as far as, you know, giving her strengths to, you know, keep going forward and things get better or whatever? Well, you know, I've been through a lot of stuff in my life, and... The one thing I've always remembered is just to stay strong and it could always be worse. And it really could, you know, at least it may not be the right time to have a child or you don't think it's the right time, but God has a plan for everything. So. Amen to that. Amen. And as long as you keep faith and stay strong, well, you'll I make had, it. I had two sisters. My mother always said, uh, told my sisters, keep an aspirin between their legs all the time, you know? You know <laughs> that that was a kind of, yeah, you know, make, make sure you don't drop. And that, that was sort of 
my mother's way of saying, hey, watch what you're doing because mm -hmm. life uh, is pretty cruel sometimes. Being a single mother, having to take care of your child, thank God, like you said, mm -hmm. you know, that um, you have some people to help you, but you know, there's a lot of young girls out there that don't got, have nobody to no help. They're trying to get, you know, they have to put these kids in daycare and stuff. And I know there's uh, government aid out there, but you know what? The government has got to change in in some right, way. And right. It's not about getting get just giving somebody. It's like mm -hmm. giving a guy a fish. You only feed him once. If you teach right. him how to fish, you feed him for life. Right. Mm -hmm. And the expenses of daycares and the expenses of a gas, you know, there's got to be somewhere it breaks or something that we can do mm -hmm. to start making things better for people. It's been Thank great doing this show with show. you guys. This is Hanging with KD, Allison Winters. You know, if you're a single mother out there, you know, don't give up. Keep trying, keep going. There's a lot of people out there that will help. We know it. Don't think you're the only one by yourself. You know, we'll be right back. if something happened to you. The ASPCA already has. They have everything that you need to know about emergency pet preparedness right on their website. And remember, there is no better friend you can have than a pet you adopt at a local animal shelter. If you love animals as much as I do, you will want them to have a long and happy life. Right, Chilby? I could get just one more gig instead of cooking up these barbecue ribs. Yes, yeah, slinging barbecue. Yes, yeah, slinging barbecue. If I don't hurry and get this music thing right, I'll be slinging barbecue for the rest of my life. Well, it could be worse than this barbecue I'm pushing. Could be sitting at home being a starving musician Waiting around for my big break Instead of cooking up these country rib plates I wish I could walk right out that door Oh yeah, order up table four A slinging barbecue Yes, yeah, slinging barbecue If I don't hurry and get this music thing right I'll be slinging barbecue for the rest of my life now it's 86 this and 86 that. These are too burnt, those are too fat. Can I get a discount? Do you sell beer? Somebody please get me out of here. I'm slinging barbecue. Yes, yeah, slinging barbecue. If I don't hurry and get this music thing right, I'll be slinging barbecue for the rest of my life. Whoa, slinging barbecue. Yes, yeah, slinging barbecue. Well, I don't want to lose my wife, but I can't sling barbecue for the rest of my life. Hey, that was slinging barbecue. We hope you enjoyed it. 
only right here on Jamming TV with KD. Here we got uh, JT. How you been, buddy? I'm doing well. How are you? All right, man. Yeah, uh, the song at the top of the hour was awesome. I love that song. Thank you. Man. Want to tell Thank us a little you. bit about it? Um, 18 days. I wrote that. It was like one of the first songs I ever wrote. Actually, what's funny is we did some shows with Willie Nelson. He's actually thinking about recording that song for his um, Opry something. I don't oh, know. Wow. Op live Opry album. So it was cool. It was, it was just about you know. Being gone, missing somebody, sappy love stuff. Well, we got a song that's going to be coming up a little bit later that you play at the end of the show there. It's, uh, you know, Clown is it um, Slinging Barbecue? Slinging Barbecue, yeah. Uh, that's uh, pretty awesome. You know, tell us how you got that one wrote. I, um, you know, I, I'd like to say there's some genius to, but I would, to our, <laughs> my writing, but I was actually just working at a barbecue restaurant and I, I hated it. So I was like sitting around and just wrote that. I, it's funny because that song I didn't think ever anybody would ever hear. I didn't think I would ever record it, but we started playing it live, and everybody would like. They'd say, "Hey, play the uh, play the barbecue song. Play the barbecue song." Well, I tell you, y'all are in for a treat for that song here a little bit later on and everything, because that's that's a really. After I hear you play it, it was really awesome. I like watching you play it, uh, you know, live when I seen you do it live. Yeah. You know, so. You got, uh, what you got going on for this 2014 since 2013 is gone, man? Yeah, we have a lot going on. We, uh, we, we're, we got a lot of tours coming up. We're going to be doing some shows with um, Keith Burns from Trick Pony. We're going to be uh, just touring around. We have a, a cruise we're playing on in October uh, the 19th. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. Is that right, Ed? Yes, that's right. <laughs> All right. 19th, right. Yeah, okay. 19th October. That's we got right. Colonel here, uh, the Egg McMahon of the show. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, so we got just, a, you know, it's the same thing. We, we normally do 200, 220 dates a year. We're going to try to keep it about that. Y'all do a lot in Alabama, Dothan, Alabama, at Cowboys, don't you? Yeah, we, uh, we're on like a rotation there. We go there every six or eight weeks, just however it falls. All the other big holidays we play there. Well, I've been playing there for years. It's a, just a great stop, you know, because it's right in the middle of the state. And, and well, I got the pleasure of seeing you here play at Cowboys here not too long ago. And I'll tell you what, I really like that venue that y'all have there. They got a great stage. They got a great atmosphere. And you guys just tore the stage up, man. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a great, and, and everybody's played there. I mean, Alabama was the house band there for years, the band Alabama. Right. Um, everybody has played there. George Jones, um, David Allen Coe. You know, the newer acts, Luke Bryant, Neil McCoy, all, everybody who's anybody has played there. So it's, it's a cool thing to get to play, you know, places that, you know. Now the fact they got there. a Neil McCoy stage, you named the Yeah, stage because he, he used to come in there like that was his first, when they rebuilt the place. It was a smaller place and, and they rebuilt it and uh, they renamed the stage because he was the first act that came in. And they're getting oh, ready wow. to make it even bigger. So it's going to be one of the biggest, it's the number one rated uh, club in in Alabama. Alabama. Yeah. Well, y'all need to come up to Dothan, Alabama at Cowboys there and see JT Curtis. I believe he'll be playing on the 29th. Yeah, yeah, we'll play the 29th. Y'all yeah, make the trip. It's well worth it. It's about a six hour ride, maybe? Yeah. Six hour ride up there. It's well worth it. Come on up there to Cowboys and see JT Curtis. And uh, your band had, wasn't able to be here today with you on this, on right. this episode of the show. So, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about your band. And, uh, you um, know, you know, it's just uh, guitar, bass, drums, and uh, myself right now. That's the, 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 the core we travel with. We're a great group of guys. I mean, if you're going to do that many um, shows and if you're going to be confined to a tour bus that long, you got to get along with the people that you're with. And, I mean, it's a, they're, they're a good group of guys. You know, we're, it's kind of like a brotherhood. You're, you're with them so much. I mean, you're with them more than you're with your family, you know, more than you're with anybody. So. You got to really get along with each other, and you got to really have the same kindred spirit kind of thing right. to uh, to coexist in that. Everybody sees a huge tour bus, and they go, "Oh my God, that's so awesome! I bet it's so nice." But you get on that thing for about 20 days, and it starts shrinking on you, <laughs> you know. And it smells like a you know yeah, a gym yeah, locker like too. A gym locker. <laughs> so, Florida Scandals is what's your band's name. Florida Scoundrels, yeah. Uh, How did you come up with the Florida Scoundrels, my friend? Actually, my guitar player, B-Rad, he used to say it a bunch. He'd be like, we'd be in 
um, you know, Texas, and he'd go, look at that guy, I bet he's a Florida scoundrel, you know. But he was just trying to pick out, really, he was just trying to pick out, you know, these people that he thought in his mind were from Florida. And he'd see like this weird car come on. He's like, hey, that guy's a Florida scoundrel right there. He's like, that's what a Florida scoundrel would. He just kept saying it, kept saying it. And then, you know, he started going to me. He's like, you're a Florida scoundrel. We did this. And, and we'd had the Silver Eagle Band for so long. You know, his dad's band, he started it. And I tried to get away from it. You know, I tried to just go by JT Curtis, but people would still call us just Silver Eagle. And then, so then I embraced it and we put it on everything. We had, you know, merch and every little thing you could think of with it. And then... Um, Key West probably was a lot to do with the scoundrel because they played down there so many times. Yeah, we just started going down there and we... You know, it's another thing, being gone... <clears throat> excuse me. Being gone on the road, you know, I'm from Florida. I've always lived here my whole life. Um, you don't realize... You, you miss it that much, you know? So we, I kind of went through, even in my, my music, you know, we try to embrace a little more Florida. You know, we, we did the Nashville thing, we recorded up there and we had that sound on, on our first album and on a few tunes on our second. Third album, you know, we're gonna, you know, we've written a couple of songs where we're gonna make it more about Florida. This is where we're from and you know we're just trying to represent you don't have to go to nashville to make make records there's wow. great records here you don't have to you know and you know it's just cool that the whole band is from a different part of florida so we know a bunch and and yeah like you said we went to key west and we really you know we really love that town and and we played there so much that um you know it just kind of it just kind of felt right and we were the silver eagle thing was kind of dated you know we felt really What's really and good, we, he'd be booked down Key West and he'd meet people and we'd played all over the world because of the people he met in Key West. So, yeah. you know, and they liked the scandal name. And I well, thought- Well, any of the, any of the, uh, you play those big beach towns, you're gonna get people from all over. You know, right. I mean, we play in Panama City, we get people from all over, you know, and then it just, you start friendships. I mean, I was talking, you know, to a guy here that's from Middletown, Ohio. I was like, I met a guy that used to be a bar, uh, you know, a bartender at one of the clubs, and his little brother is like my best friend now from, from that relationship just because you see these people, you know, all over. And it's so weird that, you know. Small world, but it yeah. seems like a big one. You know, I mean, that's the cool thing about playing music is you meet so many people and you meet, you know, and I'm not even talking about meeting stars or any of that. That's, you know, that's cool too to go, oh yeah, you know, I was, you know, playing with Willie Nelson, you know, that's, that's awesome, but it's the, like the, the normal people you meet on the road, like the friendships you make. You know, I have friends from Key West, you know, that I met there, that I mean, I did a show with here in Tampa, you know, a month ago. It's, it's, just, it's just a weird, you know. And then I have people that aren't even in the music business that you meet, you know, you met them in Dothan, Alabama, and now they live in North Carolina, or you met them here, and it's just a, it's a, it's a good, it doesn't, you know, it's a good gig. Well, one of the things, too, is that you're, you're a father of two boys, right? Yeah, I have two yeah, boys. I have an eight and a four-year-old. How rough son, is that on, on a musician is, you know, is very talented and well on you, having to travel as much for you to have to leave them boys like you do? Um, it's not, well, I mean, it's a little better now because you got FaceTime, you got all these other, other ways to get, get a hold of it. It used to be miserable because you had no way to see him. You just talk. And when they were really, my first son was really little, you, you couldn't, you know, you couldn't talk to him on the phone, you couldn't get right. pictures. And, but now, you know, with, um, you know, text messaging and, I mean, my son can work on an iPad now himself, <laughs> and, you know, send pictures and, so it's yeah, not, it's I've, not I've as bad. I've had the pleasure to meet your boys and yeah. they're, they're awesome boys. They're, and, you know. and, you know, I mean, I see them probably more than, than a, a dad that works eight, you know, nine to five. Because I'm when I'm home, I'm with them 24/7, you know. And, I, and then, man, and then when I'm that. gone, you know. And it was funny because I got to take them. We did a tour up through um, Indiana, and my dad's from Indiana. We stopped by and played his family reunion. But we did a whole tour. We went up through Nashville. We went. I don't even know. I don't remember. Oh, we went to Bristol, Tennessee, and Bristol, Virginia. 
I didn't even know that they border the same town. Did you know that? No, I sure didn't. Yeah, it's like the same town. Bristol, wow. Tennessee, and Virginia is like the same town. Wow, that's pretty cool. But anyways, I got to take my boys on on the road with us. They got to be on the tour bus and do the whole the whole deal. And dad, you know, dad had the other tour bus. So we had both tour buses oh, wow. rolling down the thing. And these kids just thought it was, <coughs> they thought it was the craziest the thing. The most wonderful thing in the world. They're just playing video games. They're like, you can play video games all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's pretty much what daddy does. You, know? <laughs> you get paid to play video games. No, nah, but they I loved it. it. And, uh, and then what was cool is dad, you know, we had the other bus up there and, and dad took them home. We went on, finished our tour. But they, uh, my son, when he first went back to school, his whole summer talk was, Every writing was like, I went on the road with my dad and I was here and we were in this town and this town. And I went through Georgia. He like named all the towns and made a little map. And that was so it. That's it's just, pretty cool. Uh, makes yeah. you butter up inside, man, as yeah. being a father, don't it? Yeah, it was pretty cool. It there. is, because uh, when I well, was... we got a song that's, uh, that you wrote with your, or your mother and your sister wrote called Hush. Yeah, my, my sister wrote it, but she wrote it in a poem and I kind of messed, you know, made it and, um, my sister had a friend that was, you know, tragically killed, and um, and then my mom was kind of going through some health problems, mm -hmm. so she wrote this like poem of a, and it's basically, you know, a mother saying goodbye. You know, it's really like sad. Um, the fact that she accepted. Well, we're yeah. gonna sit there and go to this song here just right now because uh, we had the pleasure of uh, JT playing it for us and everything. So this is called Hush. And, from J.T. Curtis. Right. Hush my little baby, hush my little dear, hush my little darling, listen to me clear, oh please don't cry, please don't cry. I have to leave this world behind me, go off on my own. Doesn't mean I don't love you God is calling me home I've got to go But I want you to know How much I love you The hours turn to days Days turn into years And time will ease your pain So wipe away your sorrow and wipe away your empty fears and let your light go on. Listen to me, child, my time is growing near. So please don't you worry, there's nothing left to fear. Oh, please don't cry, please don't cry. Although you may not see me, you'll never be alone. Part of me stays with you Even when I'm gone So don't you cry And dry your eyes I'll always love you The hours turn to days Days turn into years And time will ease your pain So wipe away your sorrow tears and wipe away your empty fears and let your light go on. Hush my little baby, hush my little dear, hush my little darling, listen to me clear, oh please don't cry, please don't cry, I'll always love you. Please don't cry and dry your eyes, you know I love you, I'm gonna miss you.
just need the input from people. Yeah, well, that's a good place to have uh, mu you know, where people can come and just see music. You know, that's a cool thing, too, because a lot of people can't get out to go see a show or, or can't afford, you know, to go and pay and get some. So you can have bands, and it's a good thing to even promote yourself, too. So. And it yeah. brings a lot of local artists that you wouldn't normally go out to see right part. in your living room. What are you so trying to you say, Ozonius? <laughs> You're usually on the road, my friend. <laughs> 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 You're usually on the road, so usually we can't go see you, is what I was trying to say. But it's also going to put him right in the living room, so now all of a sudden I know, hey, you know, I'd really like to see this show yeah. live, you know. I saw the good side of him, the bad side of him, I saw him on TV, right. you know, let's go see these guys. You know, and it brings a lot of artists out into the format where you wouldn't normally go to a club to see, is what right. I was trying to say. <laughs> Yeah, we well, normally not go see that guy, but since he's on TV, we're going to watch I'm him. forced to, right? <laughs> well, see, that's what I want about the show. This show is just fun, laughing, have good times, get truthful information out there, get people to recognize the musicians, the entertainers, you know, let, the, let their talents be seen by this community and by other communities, you know, so hopefully help shows like your shows grow bigger with more fan bases, mm. with, uh, you know, more recognitions, better money for venues, you know, better money in the club area. You know, get recognitions. Do things. We're gonna have fun, man. I'm, I'm really looking. There's forward a to lot this. of good entertainment out there that's never been out there. So to bring them out here and put them on TV, it's a, it's the best thing for them because. That's right, Ed. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and to get out there live and, and actually man. show the venues also. You know, yeah. a lot of these uh, venues have never been on a program like this. You well, know, you know, for we, us uh, to go out and do live remotes and bring some of that back, I think it's going to be Well, that's very before cool. Before this show started, uh, his last um, concert, we had, who all was there? You had uh, Juice Newton? Um, and, Juice Newton, Firefall, um, Ambrosia, Ambrosia, Ambrosia whatever I mean, these are all good groups. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're not on the charts no more, but they're still good people. Absolutely. And those people would come and do this show, and we plan on having oh, some yeah. of those people on this show. You know, but, uh, I'm very excited about that. Yeah, anybody that you know is trying to help promote themselves. I mean, it's it's, it's a no-brainer to come and do it, and because a lot of people, you know, even in in my you know business, they stereotype country music, or they're like, oh, I don't like country music, or I don't like this type of music, or I don't, you know. There's only two types. There's good and bad, and you know, and that absolutely. It depends on your opinion, you know what I'm See, saying? That's what I like about you, JT, is because you could do it all. You could do both. You could do your know, country, you could do rock, you could do whatever. Yeah, but to me that stuff want. is country. To me it's country just because I'm singing it, you know what I'm saying? So, I, I mean... It's certainly from the roots of country. Right. Yeah, but you know? his fan base is... Some of our biggest fans are people that say, I hate country. Yeah. I just don't like it. And well, he... Yeah, well, it's he, just about music. It's making, you know, music brings people, you know... Together, they even people that, that 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 don't like country or don't like, you know, metal or rap or whatever. True. And then you see people, you 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 see people that, and even if you know it's not your cup of tea, you see them enjoying what they do and being good at it. You're you're automatically even if you're not you don't want to, you're automatically drawn into that. Correct. Yeah, he toured with uh, rehab. And they booed him, actually. I was trying him. to keep that out of the yeah, press. But, uh, <laughs> uh, it was <laughs> backstage talk. Yeah. But they actually booed him, and I go, uh-oh, this boy's in trouble. And, but by the third yeah. song, yeah. Uh, I would say my saying, but he had I'm him. sure it's not appropriate. Right? <laughs> Again, <laughs> it's a family program. <laughs> and what was cool about it, by the end of the set, all the people came to see Rehab left. <laughs> so it was a... You know, but they're good. They're a good Actually, band. Actually, we love you, Rehab. Don't listen right. to them. And they're they didn't pop, leave. It was great. What are they, pop rock? Mm -hmm. or what kind of band are they? They're, I think there's a new term for it. It's hip hop. Hip hop. Really? Uh, yeah. I, I think that's a little cool. Hip hop. Yeah, hip hop. Hick -hop. Hick -hop. Hick that's like Cole Ford. And I mean, I don't know that they're actually using that, but I've heard right. of, a lot of people call that, like the Jawa Boys and Demon Jones. He just came out with a new record, the Rehab guy. They've, they've all taken a break, and then they're going to do a farewell, farewell tour. Hmm. Oh, are they going to separate? Yeah, they're all doing um, Danny. Danny Boone is uh, the, the founding member of Rehab. He's the one that's always on the videos and stuff. Um, the main guy, the writer. Um, he's doing a solo project. Demon Jones, who is like his, 
the other guy in rehab. Sure. He's doing a solo project, and then they're doing a, a farewell tour. But you know how this farewell tour. They're going to do them over and eight, over again. Eight or ten, <laughs> yeah. them, hopefully, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're booking Big up Barbara there. Big Barbara hit about yeah. five. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be booking up in their area I real was, soon. No, Cowboys <laughs> up in Atlanta. I think it's a... Yeah. You know, so yeah. A, no, that's, 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 that's Wild Bills. Wild Bills. Wild Bills. Wild Bills. Bills. Yeah. 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 Well, there's so many Cowboys we played in. Yeah. I get them all confused. Yeah, we also, y'all going to be playing the Brass Mug here soon. Yes. Brass Mug. Brass Mug in Tampa with yes. Heather and them. Uh, we're going to get great that going up. We're yeah. playing. Uh, I've never played there. there. We're so playing, we're uh, playing uh, Silver Dollar. Silver Dollar Saloon on yeah. the, uh, the 21st of uh, and, uh, February. Nice. We're playing a big birthday party uh, next weekend. Over yeah, well, that, Orlando. It's a party. It's uh, St. Cloud, I think. but It's, it's, uh, it's going to be a big party. And a lot you guys of, know a lot about our schedule. Yes, and yeah. you know, uh, he just done a wedding in Thomasville. I was, I'm a big star. You didn't know that. Yeah. See? <laughs> Wedding, birthday party. Well, you told me backstage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it was really wild. Right. I didn't get you free tickets and to any of my shows. They actually, I get they, you right in. They <laughs> actually love the show really good. You know, I, Look, I don't get to perform. Was, we're playing one of those. They're coming up. We're I don't get to perform with the band absolutely. much anymore. My son's a sign. You drive, bus, shut up. And a uh, bus loaded, I mean, not a bus, but a, a van, just like we had. Same color and everything. Come with the bus loaded nuns. And they. <laughs> And they saw the picture too. Yeah. says we should start worrying about drinking at these things. They're only 12. I know. I'm just glad you know better, sweetheart. You're too smart for that, right, honey? Real kids are curious about alcohol. 40% tried by the eighth grade. Talk early, talk often, get others involved. You know, we'll let you. I never treat us. him like that. I treat him very, very well. Yes, yeah. he never drives anymore. He's too sleepy to drive. Yeah, well, well, you know. he drives his own bus. I know. Mm -hmm. you know. He drives that. He don't drive for me. We gotta well. pay somebody to do that. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah. yeah, our, our him. bus driver is Bobo. He, he's Robert. He yeah, good. he's a good guy. Ex-military. You gotta, you gotta love that. He's he gets loves us there. his trucks. Doesn't yeah, he yeah, he's a, loves, oh my yeah. god, he's a truck person. Yeah. Every five yeah. minutes, hey man, check this truck engine out. Hey man, look at this diesel turbo. I'm like, whoa, yeah. dude, chill. <laughs> yeah, but he's a, he's a good he's guy. He's a good guy. He gets us. Yeah. Hey, gets us home safe. I got nothing, nothing <laughs> bad to say about that <laughs> right, guy. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> so. You drive while I sleep. You're <laughs> yes. good with me. Yeah, yeah. I, I sleep. It's never hard to sleep while you're running down the road. Um, no, it's. You know what's so weird is you get kind of get used to the, when I first got on one, I don't know if it's just because I was so excited that I wasn't in a van and trailer anymore. You know, I was just like, I didn't have all my gear like piled in the car. <laughs> <Sleeping seat. with> <laughs> <you>. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh my God, we're on a bus. And I couldn't sleep like for the first couple of days. Oh, wow. I, I'm serious. Like I'd just sleep here and there. Because it's, it's weird to get that, because when you hear the break, you know, somebody stops. Or, it's kind of weird to get that feeling. But after a while, now I sleep better there. Just to hearing that constant hum of the generator mm -hmm. and stuff like that. It's almost like putting yeah. a baby in a, in a little car seat sometimes when they don't yeah, want it. You know, yeah. they're crying. You take That's what they do. That's how I go to sleep now. Mm -hmm. I say, Boom. call up right Robert and say, hey, can you drive me around the block like seven times? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. It's never gone away. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm uh, really tired. Robert. I went from that in the station <laughs> wagon to Robert right. in the 45-footer. Yeah. <laughs> we used Robert. to have a band. We crowd and crowd and oh, crowd. And so 
Now we're the musician set, you know? <laughs> it was terrible. It was... I, the only good thing about riding in the van back in the day was you could brake check everybody, <laughs> you know, because they're laying in the seats. <laughs> and I used to just always be like, is everybody asleep? <laughs> and all the guys come flying on the floor. That was my favorite I've always part. pulled the... <laughs> Yeah, banging their head on the wall. Yeah, and, and we're, we're, I'm so glad we're out of the vans because, uh, you know, I was trying to video him. We were trying to get him, get, you know, I wanted him to be a star, so I worked hard at it. So one day we was going through Virginia. I'm always a star in your eyes. Yeah, I know, I know that. But anyway, we were going through Virginia, and I said, look, this next shot, we had two vans. Let me tell you how this oh, went. Yeah. This uh, guy was stopping us. We're trying to get to a gig here. You know, I'm like, Dad, we gotta actually go to the place we're going. We can't stop and take all this video footage. It's like, it's like, it's just us driving. You know, I mean, I don't know why you want this thing. Let's just take it and let's <laughs> keep using the same one over. <laughs> so we keep going through this whole thing. He's like, guys, I got the perfect shot. Come on up here. Just look natural. I was like, we're driving. How can you look <laughs> we are. unnatural? <laughs> you know? So anyways, we come down. So I told the guys, I said, man, we should moon them. And I was like, but there's no way you can actually moon them. Dude, seven dudes, <laughs> one guy driving, seven butts on the windshield. And I, God, could, I wish I had that footage there. I, if we I could, could uh, okay. loop that over. Yeah. Over. Well, so there's your video. The, and then yeah. a bunch of cussing came over our little walkie talkie. Right. Like, got, rah, 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 rah. I said, you run a perfectly good shot. <laughs> what, what? what the funny part is, that just as they passed, a uh, bus loaded, I mean, not a bus, but a, a van, just like we had, same collar and everything, come with the bus loaded nuns. And they, and they saw the picture too. <laughs> but they, they, they we, all, we, we they were all getting holding yeah, up they fingers. Were, they, were, they all give us <laughs> number one. I thought, oh, they're coming to our go, show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going to go to jail. Right there, <laughs> I thought we were going to go to jail on that one, but boy, was it funny. Uh, these boys are good. Look at <laughs> oh my gosh, that sounds so funny. Uh, uh, that's, that's a good awesome. story. Yeah, it is, man. Well, I would tell you, man, this has been a heck of a show. I've been loving y'all being here. I'm looking forward to working with all y'all this year. Absolutely. Uh, it's going to be some great things. We've got some really great acts coming out. You know, yeah. you've got some great shows coming up, Jimmy. And uh, I do. I, yeah. I Thank you for having me. I think it's going to be, be a, a, a great show. And good anything that, that helps, you know, promote music and, and local talent or or even not local talent, anybody, you know, I'm all for, man. And anything I can do, I'd love to help help you guys out. And, you know, plus yeah, I don't man. have a day job, so. <laughs> that, you, know, so. you got a day so job, can... you got to be the father that you yeah, are. Yeah, man. no, yeah, thank you. Right. Well, that's that's yeah. Awesome. yeah, but I cracked the window there in the car now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure being on the show and being a part of the show. And, it's going to be fun. You need to, to laugh see. more, Ed. Yes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I will laugh Come on, more. Man. You know. laugh this is our first Ed. show. Give us a break. We, I know. I we're it. still thinking about what we're going to do. Well, we got a lot of great things. Yeah. I got a lot of great segments that are going to be coming up. We're, we're all going to try to work on together. You know, um, I, got, I think we've had segments that's talking about uh, what live shot, street talk. You know, so this, this season we're going to have a lot of great things. And we want y'all out there to, you know, get on our Facebook or whatever. Tell us some segments. Tell us what you want to see on that Hanging with the KD show. You know, because we want your word out there. And, uh, you know, you tell us how you want this show to be Yeah, done. we want to make it fun. It's we fun, want everybody exciting. to enjoy it. You know? well, what if they Facebook you and say, we don't want you guys to have fun on your show? Well, then, then we'll forget to read that. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll just have to unfriend them. Right. You know, we won't them. like that one if yeah. you send that. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Ever think what would happen to your pets if something happened to you? The ASPCA already has. They have everything that you need to know about emergency pet preparedness right on their website. And remember, there is no better friend you can have than a pet you adopt at a local animal shelter. If you love animals as much as I do, you will want them to have a long and happy life. Right, Chippy? Wow. We have breaking news. Local children were rescued from a human trafficking operation in Pinellas County. Martinez was held captive for months, forced to work for free when he couldn't pay a smuggling fee. Four women rescued today from a forced prostitution operation in Treasure Island. The victims were beaten and tricked out of their money. Raped, forced to work on a farm for no pay. 30 victims live in a small shack outside of the farm. 
And you should know that human trafficking is the second most lucrative crime in the world today. It's hard to believe that in the 21st century, slavery is still amongst us, right here in Tampa Bay. Well, all of us, man, coming to you, say good night, one at a time, we'll sit there. Colonel? Good night. I tell you, it's been wonderful. Yeah, good night. Hey, this is Crazy Duck, and you've been watching Jammin' TV with KD. I want to thank all our guests tonight, JT Curtis, Ozonius, Colonel, Allison Winters. And I want to thank mostly you, the audience, the people. Thank you for watching. Tune in next week. In 1977, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. The odds of that same boy then making it to the U.S. and European pro golf tours, one in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the U.S. Open twice, one in 1.2 billion. The odds of him having a child diagnosed with autism, one in 110. Ernie Els encourages you to learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. struggling with hunger. Who's the one in eight in your life? You can help today. Visit feedingamerica.org slash one in eight to find your local food bank.